Thank you. The next talk is uh, by Dr. Philip Wolf Fernandez, uh, one, MVD, uh, the hundred most cited papers. Uh, so my name is Wolf Fernandez. Um, I'm a resident in Hanover Medical School. I have, uh, thank you for the honor of uh, presenting here the the bibliometric analysis um, of the hundred most cited papers on MVD. So I have no conflicts of interest to declare. So since um, also since uh, the ND and the identification and the, the first paper of Janetta concerning um, the, the foundings of uh, neurovascular conflict underlying um, the atresia uh, neurologia, like 10, around 10, uh, 20 years, it was, was then uh, shown by centers worldwide of the uh, good outcomes on MVD, uh, the safety of the procedure, less morbidity, morbidity uh, its evolution, its low grade of recurrence compared to other uh, procedures, and how it, and uh, the, the continuous of the discussion still, yeah, we are still discussing on MVD. Um, and bibliometric analysis, uh, this was one of the first um, bibliometric analysis in the neurosurgery field of Ponce and Lozano. And since then, it started to have like bibliometric analysis on many diverse fields in neurosurgery, functional, general, tumor, pediatric, skull base. And as a resident, resident interest on MVD, I was searching and I found no single paper addressing MVD nor cranial nerve disorders. There's still no bibliometric analysis <laughs> on cranial disorders. So it was, we were surprised. And um, we used the Scopus library using the, the program Harsing and Publish or Perish search engine. And uh, we introduced like four uh, keywords and each one shows normally till 200 articles, most cited articles. Then you using uh, uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria. We then gathered everything, removed duplicates and triplicates, and then selected the 100 most cited articles. And address the title, year of publication, number of citations, um, the type of article, uh, is it cohort study, descriptive study, surgical te uh, technique notes, and so on, and also the treated disorders, on crani uh, cranial nerve disorders, and then addressing also the impact factor of journals, we used Tom Survivor's web of science. So there, these are the results. Um, we had a mean of 133 articles per, um, citations per article, sorry. The, the most cited, I will address it later, of Parker, uh, 1996, uh, with 951 uh, citations. And a mean of citations per year, like to see if it's still cited in this day, like uh, a range between 188 and 38 citations per year. And the most highly cited articles were between um, the uh, 2000, 2009, and then after that, like, around uh, 90s, the, the 90s. And um, the most, the, the author with the most citations was Fred G. Parker, the second, um, especially addressing two uh, big uh, papers, one, the, the one of 1996, and the other one concerning hemifacial spasm. And the authors with most cited articles were Peter Janetta, Ag Müller, and then followed by Marx and Du. All of the, the world, the USA, um, had more uh, cited articles, followed by France, and uh, then the UK, but you see all over the world, um, there are many, many cited articles. And uh, for the institutions, Pittsburgh, followed by uh, Vetmai in Lyon, and the Oregon Health and Science University. And also the journals, the most, uh, the journal with the most cited articles, neurosurgery, for the journal of neurosurgery, acta neurochirurgica, then with less eight articles, and then the rest was like one or two. And uh, with the most citations, uh, also uh, concerning its highest uh, impact factor, New England Journal of Medicine. So we had more uh, cohort and descriptive studies. It's also um, to, yeah, we were also expecting that mostly uh, being uh, 33 retrospective studies. Uh, from the reviews, um, not, uh, three were systematic reviews, um, one concerning um, safety, the other ones concerning hemifacial spasm, and two technical notes. Um, then divided on the, the theme, the topic they are discussing, that I, we, we divided, um, and many, like one paper could address many topics, that's why we see like here many numbers, but mostly concerning outcomes and complications. This is still a question we ask uh, on this day. Uh, mostly uh, concerning terminal neurology, 
following by addressing the pathophysiology, why does, uh, what does this cranial nerve disorder happen, and also the electrophysiological monitoring, more addressing, like trying to, to make the procedure more safe, and also addressing the surgical technique. Um, these are the results. When we accumulate the highest um, impact, um, the top articles, like a cumulative dose, we, you have like trigeminal neurology, of course, followed by hemifacial spasm. And we see also a plateau concerning glossopharyngeal neurology and uh, also vertigo tinnitus. Uh, only concerning the highest articles. We then have to see if it's still, still being um, like a, a hot topic on this day. And uh, concerning to general neurology especially, try to outline these also. Um, mostly speaking of prognostic factors, we, which uh, we have spoken also today. Uh, to general neurology on MS, uh, also concerning elderly population, especially the topic of is it safe to do on elderly population, is it not? Uh, comparative studies, mostly with uh, RF ablation, also classification, type of pain. Does it also uh, predict the outcome after MVD? The use of pre-op imaging, Recurrence, TN also without neurovascular conflict, and also other topics, uh, Teflon granuloma specifically, and trigeminal autonomic reflex during surgery, and so on. Um, so, this is the list of the, ar the articles that contributed to the founding principles that we, we still uh, speak on this day on, uh, concerning MVD, and also the clinical decision making when ha we have our patients in our clinic. Um, but these are uh, academic works like the, they have an influence it doesn't mean necessarily they have like the highest evidence based um, we have a lot of a lot of studies that it's still going on this day and this is also a, a theme that we, I think we should compare uh, have other studies that should compare to other techniques also MVD uh, also in this this times of evidence-based medicine um, also addressing the highest cited uh, um, article this is the largest series on mvd for tn with with the longest uh, follow-up i mean of 6.2 years until more than 10 years showing a high pain relief with a high excellent outcome uh, excellent relief of pain and also um, 70 percent in around 10 years so this is still it's still um it also had the highest uh, citations per year so it's still an article being referenced all the time and also marking the highest effic efficacy and safety on this procedure. Um, there we noted the gap, like in the 70s, there's no highly cited uh, article. Um, this is because you have the first article of Gardner, also with the cooperation of the, the group of Copenhagen. Then you had like, a gap where Janetta uh, also like uh, had the, the first uh, article in 67. But this is not one of the most cited ones, although it was important, being also one of the uh, founding principle and since then he produced larger series and only the larger series had the highest citations so we also have have to note this is kind of a limitation when you do a bibliometric analysis is because sometimes they forgot also another patient which had had a big a big impact on the on the um on, on the field and still are not so uh, so cited so citations are missing on important papers we think um, so we see an evolution of the understanding of the cranial nerve disorders, this pathology, um, how and how we can, how we are able to treat based on the interoperative findings, and we see still on this day and is still uh, debated today, today, tomorrow, the interest of prognostic factors, preoperative imaging, the methods also to reduce complications, also associated, associated with uh, uh, electrophysiological monitoring, and also addressing the case of recurrence. But we have to be aware of the misquotes. Some, paper, uh, some papers are negatively, uh, negatively um, being quoted, like, uh, like try to discuss a theme. Uh, sometimes there are misquotations. They don't read the whole paper. They just don't understand the paper and it's still quoted. Based on this uh, giant uh, age, uh, age of giant publicational database. And, um, and we, in, in this analysis, we favor more older articles. We had accumulated enough uh, um, citations compared to new ones, which are also important, also addressed. So this was a, less, uh, a list of the classics that helped us understand the evolution of the theme. It's also a benchmark. Every uh, bibliometric analysis could be a ben uh, benchmark to draw attention on all neurosurgeons in the world. And it can also outline the gaps of knowledge for future research that we are still uh, debating to this day. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Philip. I'm going to 